On this week's show, we're gonna talk about warming your horse up. Hey, some great routines and exercises that'll put a lot more handle on your horses. But you know what? What do you do after you ride your horse? Show you some great cool down exercises and routines that are really good for your horse, keep him quiet and gentle, the mark of a great horse. Hey, this is gonna be a super show and you won't wanna miss it. And it's coming to you right now here on Ride Smart. training horses, uh, one of the first things I do is, is warm them up. And I don't necessarily have to be in a round pen to do that, but for today's show, I'm gonna work in the round pen so you can stay right with me. So how would I start? I can tell you right now, I brought this horse in here and I turned him loose and I sent him around that round pen and I actually counted about 10 or 12 times each direction. I was waiting for this horse to relax, drop his head, wiggle his ears, blink his eyes. I can hear him turn loose of his breath breath, all those little gestures that the horse is telling me I'm getting that edge off, taking away that, that, that freshness. You know, you can't ride a fresh horse and do a real good job. So once I step up on the horse, I'm really, it's important to me that this horse stands still when I go to get on, always trying to create good habits. And then one of the first places I start is just softening the horse. If you notice when I take a hold of this horse, I don't pull. It's more like, like a signal. If you watch me just vibrate that rein, and I want these horses, when they bend, to stay here on a loose rein. Like if he has to move his feet, I'm gonna stick with it. I want saying stay here on a loose rein. There's that softness, because if you can't get that on a loose rein, in my opinion, it's not really a give or a true yield. So watch me take my hand down. I'm using a snaffle bit, the true training bit that has no leverage on a young horse. So again, watch, I reach down like so. Let me turn my horse where you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna reach down and watch, instead of pulling, watch this more of a signal. I want to keep these horses kind of light. See how this young horse wants to move his feet? You know what? Don't quit the, what you're doing. Stick with it. And watch, I just slightly and lightly bump that horse around, and I want to get that softness here. See, I can come right back over here pretty soon, get that softness. As I release, I want him to stay there until I kind of drop that rein. And pretty soon, these horses will get really soft. You know, when I get a horse to soften in his lower jaw, soften in his pole, I just rock that little bit to just get him to kind of soften up. And one thing I also do is I get to where I can bump my legs around on these horses. If you can't put your legs on your horse, guys, guess what? In my opinion, he's not really broke. I'm not asking this horse to go anywhere. I'm just asking him to accept my legs. So sometimes I'll rock that bit, ask him to soften in the lower jaw, soften in the pole right there as I use my legs at the same time. Now, one of the things I like and you should get really good at, and that's controlling the hip or the hind quarter of this horse. You know, I don't want to overbend him. I will if I have to, but remember, as your horse gets straighter, to me, he's getting more advanced. So watch me just slide this leg back. This horse is going to feel it, and I'm just asking him to step that hip over just like that just a little bit. Watch me just, you know, again, I'm ready with my hands to hold him, just slide that leg back and see how he just steps over. And that's from just doing that over and over again. Remember, you can ask almost any greenhorn, how does a horse learn? And they'll all tell you repetition. But repetition is not five or six or 10 times. It can be hundreds or thousands of times to get these horses where they really understand the language of a field. Now again, right here, if I wanted to move the front end, I'd kind I'm going to rock him back and push him over. I'm going to rock him back and push that front end over. Kind of rock him back and push. When I say push, I'm pushing with that outside rein, outside leg. That last maneuver, I moved him here. So why don't I just go ahead and pick that right rein up and ask this horse now to move laterally to the left like that. 
Now I'm going to ask him to move laterally to the right. I got my right leg on and my left leg off. And it's all a give and take motion. It's give and take. As he moves, I take it off. As he moves, I take it off. As he moves, I take it off. Watch, if I'm going to move to the right, I pick my left hand up, take my right hand away, look where I'm going, and use that good give and take motion. This horse, I'm making sure that he's listening to me, that everything's uh, uh, in shape, that he's ready to go. So again, right now, if I just take a hold of this horse, I could get to where I could back him in a little circle. To back the direction I'm going now, watch, I got my left leg back right here, and I'm just a step at a time. Watch how my hands are always a give and take motion. Watch me shift this leg back now to change that direction. And if you notice, I'm not pulling hard. It's just real soft and I'm using my legs to move this horse and softly just back this horse up. At this point, I feel like this horse is kind of getting ready to move somewhere. But you know what, you've heard me say it before, I like to start at a walk, end at a walk. Because you know what, a lot of people never walk their horses, then they got these horses that are always in a rush, always in a hurry. You know, they tell me my horse is kind of chargy. You know what, they never walk these horses. And I'll tell you something about a horse that, that won't walk, that won't just walk out. That's a nervous horse. What's the first instinct of a horse in time of trouble? Just go fast. So again, if you'll teach them every day to start at a walk, you know, I could just be walking down the trail or anywhere. I don't have to be in a round pen. Just walking along, just like this. Nice and easy. Look at that nice loose rein. And I got rhythm in my hips here. I ride this horse through that feel all the time. But remember the our flexion, flexion exercises that we just did when we tipped the nose right and left? Now I need to be able to do it while his feet are moving. So I want to come over here. And I don't want to turn this horse. I just want to bend this horse. Here, bend him to the left. Real soft. Look how soft those reins are. Now I'm going to bend him to the right while his feet are moving. Just real soft all the time. And I keep his feet moving. That controlled forward movement. Now, as I rock those bits here, I want to soften him in that pull. Notice again, it's never a pull. It's always a signal. But look how I got my legs kind of on this horse. Everything I'm doing, time I'm doing something with my hands, I want to also do something with my legs. Watch right here. As I take my left leg back and push the hip to the inside of that turn right there. Watch me re go over here and right my right leg back and push the hip and keep him walking here. I'm controlling what? Head, neck, shoulder, rib cage, hind quarter, down to the feet. Really nice and soft. And I'm just warming up. Look at this horse as he goes to drop his head. Now watch, if I can tip his nose to the right through flexion, I ought to be able to move his body to the left. And this is where I begin to put the handle on the horse through these warm-up exercises. See, and you don't have to be going 100 miles an hour to get the job done. Walk in these horses. Just get that rhythm and walk with this horse. Tip the nose to the left and push the horse what? To the right. Left leg on, right leg off. Still just walking, still just warming up. Just getting this horse where he's better all the time. If I could tip that nose to the right, right here. I can walk him in a circle here and control the front end. I'm really controlling the shoulder of my horse. And watch me at the same time kind of rock my hands to keep his nose down, but watch his front feet. They begin to cross over. They begin to cross over. He's arcing to the right, traveling to the left. So I'll just keep that arc right and walk right out of that turn. I think I'll bend him to the left. So this maneuver is what? Counter bending my horse. All at a walk, part of my warm up routine here. And watch where my hands, I'm kind of leading him with the right rein, pushing him with the left rein, and I'll just head off to the left. So again, this horse is just getting softer, putting up with me, following a feel, learning to give to pressure, and I'm controlling the whole horse simply at a walk right here. Now that I've got this horse sort of coming my way, now would be a good time to kind of just bump or ease into a trot. Listen, you gotta quit kicking these horses. I'm not gonna kick them, I'm just gonna push, like tighten my core, 
push with my seat, squeeze with my legs, and move my hands forward and just ask this horse to go somewhere. Got those hands just forward. Now again, this is when I can pay attention to the arc of my horse. I'd like this horse to be nice and straight, but like, you can see this horse taking his nose a little bit to the right. So let's pick up on that left rein, literally pick up, keep my right hand down, and work on just finding that soft trot here and position up real nice, just like this. So I'm just trotting along and softening him in the pole and just really pretty. Watch me just come across the middle right here. Now watch me lift my right hand, pick up on my left rein and push on the left rein. So when I'm gonna change directions, watch I'm gonna open up with my right leg here and then press with my left. Open up with my right rein, press with my left and just guide him across the middle. Now, open up with the left, push with the right, and get this horse where they're really listening to me. A real good exercise to teach them the neck rein is just do a figure eight with your outside rein. Watch me push on that outside rein to the left. Push on my left rein to go to the right. Watch me push on my right rein to go to the left here. And I'm really riding, I'm not sitting. Push on that left rein to go to the right. I'm gonna push on that right rein to go to the left. And look how nice and straight my horse is. Push on that left rein to go to the right. And I'm teaching this horse just neck rein. Look at those loose reins, then look at that nice level top line that I got going on. Another place I could begin to put a little hand on my horse is just do a one rein turn. You see this horse, he's just really ready to go canter, but I'm just getting him to put effort into slowing down. Because I bet you'll agree with me, it's a heck of a lot easier to speed up most horses than it is to slow them down. So I let him just maintain this soft, slow, loose rein trot. Now watch me put both reins in my right hand, reach my left hand down and slowly guide him to the left. And as he comes, just turn him loose. Just turn him loose. Now watch me reach down. I'm gonna bend with that right rein to head back to the left. And I'm just gonna guide him, and as he comes, just turn him loose to that horse. Just reach down and bend him and send him. And when I say send him, I'm gonna use my left leg now, and I just squeeze and go somewhere. I'm gonna start pushing and go. Now watch me start looking over my shoulder. Look where I'm going, right here. And just starting to put a little bit of handle on this horse, here. Just guiding and not pulling. It's always about guiding and with a soft touch. Now, right here, this horse has been working a little bit, and boy, he's right up under me. Watch me slide my left leg back and just push it in to a simple right lead and listen to that horse just turning loose. Those are the sounds that I love. That. Now, as I ride, it's real important to me that I don't lean. I want to, if anything, ride the outside of my horse. Keep my elbow into my side. Notice that really loose rein right there. And I'm just guiding. Pick your eyes up, Craig. Move those hips and work with this horse. Here, little rhythm in my right hand. And if I want to stop, watch, I'm going to sit down and take my legs off. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, whoa. Boom, and just wait on that horse. You know, we're not trying to force anything. We're just trying to let things happen. And again, work through that all important component that we call feel. And remember, feel for you and for me and the horse is physical, mental, emotional, mind, body, and spirit. Think more about that last component I just said, the spirit of the horse, the inside of the horse. You want to work from the inside of you to the inside of your horse. Hey, when we come back, I'm going to show you a great cool down routine that I do as I'm getting off a horse, getting a horse unsaddling, taking care of him, that keeps my horse relaxed, comfortable, and ready for the next ride. You know one of my favorite items here in the Double Horn store? I bet you can guess what it is, because I've got it with me almost all the time. And that's my Craig Cameron Cowboy Knife. You know, this is a really great little knife. It's all handmade, the knife and the sheath. 
And this knife is really handy, and that's what I really love about it. I can get to it whenever I need it. It's got a bone handle, and I guarantee this little knife holds an edge. I use it almost every day, but my favorite part, you know, it fits right there on my belt at an angle, whether I'm sitting in a chair, in the saddle, or standing up when I need this knife, it's there for me, and I got it in my hand. People ask me all the time, Craig, does, will that knife stay in the sheath? Well, you know, you watch me ride every single week on Ride Smart, and it stays right where it's supposed to stay. So absolutely, it'll stay in that little holster that's designed to carry it. Hey, if you got a cowboy or cowgirl in your life that you're looking for a gift, whether it be Christmas, birthday, or whatever, nobody likes anything better than the Craig Cameron Cowboy Knife. Hey, to order, go to craigcameron.com. We'll send it to you out of the Double Horn store. Well, we're back and we did our warm up routine. So good for me and my horse. You know, at this point, I could go out on the trail, I could work cattle, I could work on my obstacles. But you know what? When I finish my training routine, one thing that you might want to incorporate into your program is before you get back to the barn to step off this horse before you get there. I tell you what, a lot of top trainers do that. So like if I was heading to the barn now, instead of riding to the barn, you know what's a great thing to do? Step off your horse here. And first thing I'm gonna do is loosen this cinch. Well, I'm gonna loosen it up as a reward to my horse now. So I'm just gonna loosen this up here like that, pull it loose right there it's really soft and you know what i'm never opposed to petting my horse you know i believe a horse knows when you like him he knows when you don't so again put those hands on him i'm gonna put my rein right up here and i'm gonna walk him to the barn all right i'm headed that way you know that little walk that i walk in right here it's it's uh about 50 yards or so. I think it means a lot to the horse, you know. That's where they really relax and turn loose. And that way I'm not riding to the barn. I don't get them where they're barn sour and running back. You know, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that bit off right there and, and then put my halter on. But one thing I think a lot of people do is they really forget about that bit. They, you know, when I take a bit off, I really show a lot of respect for the horse and then I don't make my horse head shy or hard to bridle. So again, as I remove the bit, you can see I don't throw any of my reins on the ground or any of that type of stuff. I think that's really unprofessional. You end up stepping on at the horse. Now the important part is to handle the ears quietly and allow him to take that bit out. I never force it out, almost like lift it out, and I never pull it off of him. I let him kind of just turn loose of it. You know, right here with my halter, you can see I got everything up off the ground, and I'm just gonna kind of comfortably come across, control his face, and I like it when the horse actually sticks his head in the halter. You do that by allowing him to actually find that halter where he wants to be haltered. You know, I'm a big believer, especially in the summertime here in Texas, just rinsing my horse. I don't necessarily uh, soap them every time, but uh, as you notice this horse right here, I just have the lead line wrapped. So if he sat back, it would just pull loose. So I'm not gonna get in a bind. But I just like to hose them, but when I hose them, I want them to be wet all over when I get finished, up between those legs. And guess what? Look, if you water that mane, it'll grow like a flower. Watch me get his face a little bit here and take it away. Put it up there, take it away. That's a good way to gently your horse, but just a little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time. And don't forget what? To do that tail. And I like to get up under that tail like that. And it's a young horse and that's good for him here. But just got him wet all over from head to toe, just like that. And you know what? That's also gonna really cool my horse off. You know, one thing I like to do is in the summertime, you'll find that your manes get really dry. Well, I'll just buy a cheap conditioner in town and I'll just put a big glob of it. I mean, like a lot of it, like this, and I'll just put it in those tails and I'll really get the root of that tail. But man, I'll get a bunch of it, like here, and I'll just put it all in that tail, like this, and just, and I don't mind using quite a bit. This stuff's really cheap right here and uh, it works really good. 
like so. And then I'll come over to that main and do the same thing. I'm just gonna just ease along here and put some in my hand like this, just like so. And here, I'll just put it all in that mane, get this horse where they're really good about all that. And I'll just leave that conditioner actually just, just on them like this. You know, and again, I can scrape my horse down and check his legs after I've gotten through riding in here, make sure he's good. Uh, you can squeeze that water off of there. And all this stuff only takes a moment to do it to get your horse really gentle all the time after the ride. And so uh, these horses will get where they get good about a sequence of picking up their feet. And you know what I would do now? I'd lead him over there. I got some big fans right there and I'd hobble this horse. So he's learning to stand hobbled, tied, and that fan dries them off. Then the last thing we do, we brush them, then we walk them and put them up. One thing I might mention, when I put my horses up, I, I send them into that pen. I get them where they're good about sending, turn them around, back them up, pull that halter off. So it's me walking away from the horse, not the horse walking away from me. You know, a good warm-up routine, a good finishing routine at the end of the day, it doesn't take any extra time and it makes a really great gentle horse. And as a horseman, that's what good horsemen want. Craig Cameron Horsemanship Clinics at the Double Horn Ranch are designed to fit each rider's individual needs. Five different round pins, corrals, arenas, and the original extreme cowboy race course make great horses and riders. I learned more in three days than I have in the first 35 years I rode a horse. It was like having a private lesson, even though it was a group, it was like having a private lesson. Yeah, you'll wear out the Wrangler in your jeans, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Advance your horsemanship and come ride like a champion with me at the Double Horn Ranch. Hey, I hope you learned some stuff this week. And uh, again, keep in touch with us. Any of the equipment you saw us use, go to craigcameron.com. Hey, you keep riding like a champion. We'll see you next week here on Ride Smart.